Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs updated Gigapixel AI to version 6.2.0. Today, we're going to take a look at what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Gigapixel AI. And we're going to be using it as a plugin in Lightroom. It of course works as a plugin in Photoshop and as a standalone application as well. We're going to be working on this image. I already did some Lightroom processing on it, and as you can see, I did a very significant crop to it. The resolution after cropping is 2796 by 1864, so if I wanted to get a high quality larger print from this, it probably wouldn't look very good because I cropped away so many of the pixels. That is where Gigapixel AI comes in. So I'm going to send this image directly into Gigapixel AI from Lightroom by right clicking right on the image, going down to edit in, and then over and down to Gigapixel AI. Now it is a raw file, but when you use Gigapixel AI as a Lightroom plugin, you cannot send raw files directly into it. That isn't a limitation of Gigapixel, that is a limitation of Lightroom. Lightroom won't allow you to send raw files directly into any plugin. You first have to convert them to a TIFF, PSD, or JPEG. In this case, uh, Topaz Labs recommends a TIFF file with these settings, and I'll just go with those default settings and click Edit. You can see in the top left-hand corner, there's a progress bar. Lightroom is creating that TIFF file with those specs, and it will open it up into Gigapixel AI. Now, I prefer to use Gigapixel AI in what's called Comparison View. In Comparison View, I could see four of the five different AI models at one time and compare them to one another. Now this video isn't meant to be a total uh, how-to video on how to use Gigapixel AI. I have several of those videos on YouTube already. Today we're going to be talking about what's new in Gigapixel AI. So I may leave out some details about how to use Gigapixel AI. I encourage you though to check those other videos if you want to learn how to properly use Gigapixel AI. Now, what is new? First of all, of these five AI models, they updated all of them, so they work better. What you'll find is when you update your Gigapixel AI to version 6.2.0, the first time you run it, it will download the new AI models, and that may take some time depending on your internet connection. But once it does it once, it won't have to do it again. The other new thing they've added, they've added a new type of auto. Now you're probably familiar, those of you that use Gigapixel AI, that there is an auto settings, right? So I'm in standard right now, that's the active one, and you can see I have the settings set to auto. And what that does is Gigapixel AI will look at the image and determine the settings for these two sliders. If I go over to low resolution, you can see that's an auto as well and very compressed is in auto, and lines is in auto as well. The new auto they've added is Gigapixel AI will determine which AI model to use. Now where this would come in handy is if you're using um, Gigapixel AI as a bulk editor, you send over 20 or 30 images, you could set that auto to on, and what will happen is it will choose the best AI model that it feels is the best AI model for each of those images, and that will save you a lot of time. Now, it's right here. If we look um, right here, you'll see this grayed out button. That's the new auto AI model. Unfortunately, it's grayed out because I'm in comparison view. For that to work, you have to be in single view. So I'll go to single view, and I'll turn this on. And right now it's in low resolution, right? So we'll do this and it shows the standard model. It thinks the standard model is the best model. Now, whether or not that's true, I guess it's subjective. To me, I don't like the standard model. There's a lot of noise on the subject. I hope you could see it in the video. And it just kind of looks funny around the edges of the chipmunk's fur. So to me, I don't think it shows the best model. Uh, your opinion may differ. So I'm going to go back to the comparison view and there's the standard model again. The low resolution model, although it's not as sharp as the standard model, it doesn't have this odd pixelization or this odd um, artifacts going on over here on the edge of the chipmunk. So I think that one looks pretty good. As a matter of fact, 
that's probably the best one. This one has it over here as well, and Lines does. Now there is a fifth model. Uh, the fifth model that we're missing is Art in CG. If I wanted to see that, I would pick one of the models that I don't think I'm going to use. That would be Lines, let's say. And I could just click on Art in CG, and it will swap out the uh, lines with art in CG, so that shows up down here. So I still think low resolution probably is better, and if you want to see a before after, just click with your left mouse button, there's before, and there's after, and you can see the before after. So I still think low resolution is probably better. It is, it does have the settings set to auto as well. I could try to improve it, maybe get rid of some of that noise over there that's still a little bit, of course, when I do that, it's going to make it a bit blurrier. Um, I could try to remove some of that blur with that slider as well, but that kind of reintroduces the noise, doesn't it? So it's kind of a balance between these two sliders. If I just put it on auto, I think that looks fine. Now down here, we have some additional settings. Um, face recovery, if there was a person in here, you of course don't want to leave artifacts on their face or maybe have it overly sharpen the pores of someone's skin. So you would turn face recovery on and it will find the faces of the people in the image and make sure that it doesn't do anything that would make them look unusual. Uh, gamma correction, uh, just if you see that the tone and color are a bit off, you could try turning that on. I think it looks better with it on. Uh, just That's just something to try out and see if that works. Now, I didn't mention, well, how big are we making this? Uh, it, the original image was 2796 by 1864, and I think making it twice as big would be good. I could get a relatively good larger print, and making it twice a bit as big will make it 5592 by 3728. I have options, of course, to make it half as big, four times as big, six times as big, or I could just dial in my own um, multiplier here, or I could give it a specific width or a specific height as well. Um, in this case, I think uh, 2x is fine. So I'm just going to do that. Now you have to wait for it to update. Click on them to help encourage it to update. Um, so again, I still think that the um, low resolution model is best, and I'll click Apply. And what it will do is it will take this TIFF file and it will create it and make it larger and put it in Lightroom, and we can take a look at it. Now, here's the original image. The original, again, was 2796 by 1864, and here is our larger image, which is 5592 by 3728. And here, if I wanted to do some sharpening, like it did look like the chipmunk was a bit blurry, I could select the subject, and it's selecting the leaf too. That's okay, I, I don't mind that. And I could come in and maybe increase sharpening, maybe increase the texture a little bit make them look a little sharper and that's it so that's what's new not a lot a uh, lot new but that's what's new in gigapixel ai um, again i believe that auto mode where you have it pick the model that it thinks is best i think that would probably be more into play if you are sent using it as a bulk editor and you're sending multiple images to it you you're in a hurry try doing that. Now in my case, I don't think it picked the best model. Um, if you have used this and tried this, let us know what your findings are. Does it pick the best model for you? Again, that is subjective. So it may not be, um, it may not, we may, may not all feel the same way about that is what I'm trying to say. So that's it for this video. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>